Hi, I'm Sean from Simply Rhino, and I'd like to welcome you to the third tutorial in our Getting Started with Rhino for Mac series. In this tutorial, we'll be looking at some modelling aids. So, OK, let's start with uh, looking at something called Tab Constraint, or also known as Direction Lock. Now, I've got two surfaces here. Now, if I was to draw a line, so if I just click on the Polyline tool here, now, if I start by finding the endpoint here, I make a left click. Now, you see, as I place my cursor over the bottom left-hand corner of this green surface, I've got the end tooltip appear, which meaning meaning that if I make a left click, it's going to place that line past, uh, precisely at that location. But if I just tap the tab key directly above the shift on the left-hand side of my keyboard, the line turns white. That's known as an elevator line. And what Rhino has done is that it has constrained the line so it passes precisely through that endpoint. Now I'm yet to decide how long this line will be. I've got the small crosshairs on the screen, which means that I can make a left click. Also, I can type a value into the keyboard. So if I typed in, for example, 100, it would draw that line 100 long. OK. Now. Of course, this would work, doesn't necessarily have to be passing through an object snap. If I just place my cursor over here on the left hand side, I tap, tap on the tab key. Again, you can see I'm constrained. Now, this of course would work within the 3D space too. Now, let's just delete that. Now, let's have a look at Smart Track. Now, Smart Track, we see we can turn it on here at the top of the interface and down the bottom in the left hand corner here too. So I'm just going to activate Smart Track. Now, Smart Track works in conjunction with object snaps. It also um, works in conjunction with the ortho, whatever the orthogonal setting is. Now, if I was to, for example, try to place a point object, at the apparent intersection of this lower edge of this kind of gold surface here. If you imagine if there was a line that continued from the lower edge of that surface horizontally here, and another line was dropping vertically from the edge of this surface here, there would be an apparent intersection round about here. Now, what we don't want to do is use um, sacrificial geometry. Yeah, We don't want to draw a line across here and here and find the intersection. Now, Smart Track will allow us to find points, object snaps, on existing objects. So let's place a point object just here using Smart Track. First of all, I come up to the toolbar here and I'm going to click on my single point. Now in bold here, it's asking me for location of point object. Now note that I've got just the end object snap on. I place my cursor over the bottom left hand corner here. There's a solid white circle kind of blue circle too, over the top of um, the bottom left hand corner of that gold surface. And you can see as I just drop down with my cursor, there's that horizontal temporary white reference line appearing. Okay, And that angle of that line will coincide with whatever your ortho setting is. Now let's move over to where this, um, I need to move over to the top left hand corner here and place a blue circle over the bottom left hand corner and then find the apparent intersection. And you can see that Rhino now is, we can see the tooltip of intersection. Note, before I just make a left click and place that point object there, that if I run over this previous point, okay, Rhino will deselect it and it will no longer place that vertical um, temporary reference line. So just by floating your cursor over a object snap, or coming back to it, we'll deselect it. So select it, and now I find intersection, make a left click. OK, so let's delete that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to have a look at uh, two modeling aids, planar and project. So I'm just going to come over here so I can turn on, I'm just going to toggle between my layer one and layer two. I'm going to turn off layer one and turn on layer two. I can get rid of these panels. Now, 
I'm going to go to four views and I'm just going to type in ZEA. That's an alias for uh, zoom extents or viewports. Now, you can see that we've got three surfaces at three different heights. Now, let's just shade that. Now, first of all, let's have a look at project. Um, before we actually turn the project um, modeling aid on, which is down here at the bottom of my object snaps here, the reason why we find it um, within the object snaps, although of course it's not an object snap, but what it does is that it actually projects object snaps. So that's why we that's why it has an association with them. Now let's come up to polyline here and let's let's turn off smart track. And I'm just going to draw a polyline following the profile of these surfaces. Now, as we'd expect, um, we're not drawing on the construction plane because, of course, I was using object snaps. And object snaps will override the default nature of Rhino to draw on the construction plane. Now, if I wish to create a, a profile of these surfaces, but actually place the uh, curve on the construction plane, I could use project to do that. So let's just delete that polyline and let's just carry out the same procedure, but with project on. So I turn on project and let's do now, even before I've, I've made a left click, you can see that elevator line appear in all viewports showing me that the, um, my polyline, uh, my object snap is being projected down to the uh, construction plane below. So there. So note that my active viewport is the top view. Therefore, the project is being projected down to the top construction plane. Now, I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to turn off project and I'm just going to Go back to where we started here because I want to show you another little command that's very similar where you can actually alter this polyline retrospectively. Now, if I look under the transform, I'm looking for a surface, I'm looking for project to C plane. If I go into the command line here and let's just type in, there you go, I found that there within the autocomplete. So I've just typed in PRO and I find the third, I select my curve and if I click on done here or press enter when done, active viewport is the top viewport here, I click on done. It's asking, now, asking me now for whether or not I want to delete the input objects. When Rhino asks for an input object, it refers to the selected object here. So I'm going to say yes. And you can see now that it's as if I projected that line right at the start. So that's how you can change a line, how you can flatten it um, use, using an AutoCAD term there, flatten. Um, but you'll find actually that Rhino's um, project to C plane and project commands are a bit more successful. OK, now let's have a look at um, the modeling aid planar. OK, and we see that here right at the top. Now let's delete this line. Now planar. Now planar simply means flat. We see it pop up um, in a number of commands in Rhino. We see it in planar curves. Um, we see cat planar holes. It's a very common uh, CAD term. Now what I'd like to do in using planar is that I'm going to create a line that's level at the same height as this green surface here. Now let's if I just make sure plane is not on now if I just start drawing a line just to remind ourselves what's going to happen here I'm going to find the end point in the bottom left hand corner of this green surface I'll make a left click now of course look there's that default nature of Rhino projecting that line straight down to the construction plane you see that in all the views. Now, look what happens when I 
If I turn on planar, okay, that's no longer the case. It's maintain the height above the construction plane. So I can make a series of left clicks, and you can see that line appearing in all the other views, and its height matches the very first one that I found um, via that object snap in the bottom left-hand corner of that green surface. Okay, But note, note what occurs here. If I bring my cursor over to the bottom right-hand corner of this surface here and make a left click, Rhino drives that. See that in the right viewport here? It drives that line down to the, the, sorry, the object snap of that lower surface. So we can see there, we can see that object snaps override the planar modeling mode. And of course, every subsequent point will match the last object snap height above the construction plane. Okay, so that's planar. So let's just get rid of that. Now, what I'd like to show you now is a combination of um, planar and project. Say if we wish to create a, um, a polyline that define the profile of these surfaces but maintained their height. In other words, created a planar line. So a line, same height as the green surface here, same height above the construction plane, but picking up the object snaps of each of these surfaces. Now we can achieve this by combination of project and planar. But the only tricky thing, the only thing we need to be aware of is, that the, is, is the moment in which we need to turn project on. So let me demonstrate. If I click on polyline, now, if I have project on now, of course that line would be projected down to the construction plane. So we turn it off. Now, make sure plane is on. I make a left click. Now, if I turn on project, you'll see, well, we won't see it quite yet, but the next point here, you can see that white elevator line. All right, thanks for joining us today. Please subscribe to our channel if you'd like updates when new tutorials are posted. Bye.